Hello. Hello. Welcome to the cream of the crop. It's it's time. (laughs) It's podcast mode time. We're here. The the rare tabletop royale podcast mode. We've done it. All right. So this is our year in review for the year 2022. This is our all the games we played during the year and how we feel about them. So we're just going to kind of touch on all the games one by one. Uh, We're calling it the 2022 cream of the crop. After we go through all the games, we'll each tell us uh, or explain which one of those is our favorite and why. So there you go. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, and I uh, I was telling them before, but I have not made up my mind which game that we played was the cream of the crop for me personally. So, yeah, yeah, I, want I don't know that I do. I've made that either. So we'll, well, it'll kind of develop, I think, organically as we talk more about these games. Mm-hmm. Uh, mine was locked in. It's locked in. Stone Cold Lock, and I think I know exactly what oh. it is too. Stone Cold Lock of the Century of the, of the Week. week. I, right. Yeah, I feel I feel like yours is is probably mine in my heart, but I'm going to name a different one so we all have different. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the first game up, the cream of the crop is Starship Captains. You may remember Starship Ooh. Captains from our stream a couple weeks ago. <laughs> we streamed it we're twice. Trying to, we're trying to re- reverse engineer out the recency bias. By talking about the most recent first. In reverse order is, is how we do reverse it. Reverse chronologically. Uh, Starship Captains is a game from Shet Games Edition. It came out, I think, like, it might not be actually released yet, <laughs> but Logan got a copy it's at a, Pax Unplugged. It's out, out. It's uh, out, out, it, okay. It, but it, it, it's like month of December release. Like, it's, it's very, very, it's very new. Recent, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. One to four players co-op, or no, it was competitive. Uh, you yep. each captain a starship and you fly around the galaxy trying to complete various missions and tasks and uh, uh, relate with different alien factions and such and grow your starships um, crew, right? So, mm-hmm. how do we feel about Starship Captains, y'all? I I feel like it, like, even though you it's a bits and pieces game is how we we call it at my house where it's just like there's a lot of stuff going on mm-hmm. but there's there's like the minimum amount for it to still feel very much like Star Trek. Yes. And it does feel really like you're each yeah. captaining your own Star Trek show. Yeah, I I've I've uh I talked about it at the store cuz uh, some people were asking me about games I was excited about recently. I was like Star Trek Captains is awesome. It was sweet. Um it it's it's Star Trek simulator. It's a lot of fun. You you fly around. You get to fight space pirates. You know it. It you get you get, you you check all the boxes for a fun space adventure. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I I really enjoyed it. I'm a big a fan lot. of the uh, the mechanics and the components of the game. The the, st- the starship itself yeah. had really yep. easy to to see spaces for all the components, all the things you needed to have on it. Everything that happens in the game flowed very well. Like as far as the, how you placed your your models on your ship to perform actions, how you placed uh, your components in your um, was the technologies board or whatever yeah. that is. Mm-hmm. I like, I liked how that worked together a lot. Uh, and then I we think we, we played it, we compared it a lot to the lost ruins of Arnak as far as like you do an action, that's your turn. You move on to the next person. They do an action. I think that's one of the best ways to handle a game like this, where the, they're so uh, thinky that you have time to think about your turn in between when everyone else has taken their turn. So it doesn't really feel like there's a lot of downtime person to person, which is yeah, really exactly. important to me, especially for, for games like this. Otherwise, like you can have games where somebody's turn takes, you know, forever and, and everyone else's oh, yeah. table's getting bored. I, so I, I cannot imagine Starship Captains working as one player uses all of their characters. Just imagine Ugh. how that'd boring be awful. that would yeah, be. Awful. Yeah. And I, mean, already, did, I already did that. I already did that a little bit in this game where I was, I would take like four or five actions after everybody else. Right. Done yeah. I mean, yeah, and it, it can take some time I mean, to really think feels... about what's your best possible move yeah. for a turn, right? Like that, that's, and that's fine, but that happens every once in a while. And the getting to the point where you have a bunch of actions in a row, just it like it alerts the table, like, Hey, this person is ahead. You yeah. should, you should shape up. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to mention like the pieces, like there's no reason for them to have needed to do this, but the pieces for the little ensigns, are a very diverse cast. Like there's a ton of different models. Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't uh, even notice that when we played. Right? There's like some it's aliens like various in there genders and, and yeah, yeah. There's aliens. There's like obviously black hairstyles. Like th- it's there's a lot of there's a lot of diversity in that's, the, yeah, in that's the awesome. models. We didn't get but to appreciate the art right? that much uh, when we played the game because the the cards were kind of small, but we showed them off on the card cam. Uh, but the art mm-hmm. in the game, I thought, was really uh, was really charming. Yeah, absolutely. 
So I, yeah. I'm a big fan of the game. I think after we played it, I had that feeling of I want to play this game again almost immediately, and that's always right. a good sign for a board game, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. Yeah. The, it's, uh, it's honestly like we're we keep comparing it to Lost Ruins of Arnak, and I'm wondering like compared to those two, which one is going to eke out? Who knows? Yeah, I'd have to play them both back to back, right? Arnak is they, is. It's, it's they got that deck building element, niches. right? And so the deck yeah, building, they yeah, they, yeah, they definitely scratch different niches. They just like follow the same sort of pattern of game. The gameplay pattern is similar, yes, right? Because it's worker placement, yeah. and it's like you're you're working toward the old goal of getting the most points. I mean, yeah, basically, right? Yep. So it's it's well, just different I, mechanically, which I, is I fine. Will say, and they're they're different will, enough to be distinct. Yeah, I will say Arnak does a better job of the exploration aspect than this game does which I feel like is like the only thing as far as like Star Trek that doesn't quite deliver on. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. feel like you go to some place and you have no idea what's going to be there. You're very much aware of what's going to be where you're headed, right? Yeah. Which isn't quite Star Trek, uh, like not, not quite, but right. Arnak does a better job of that just kind of exploration feel. So Yeah, you don't even know, like there's going to be a giant monster there, but you don't even really know what the giant monster is going to do to you and right. then what's going to be you don't there. You don't have to prepare for it. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's Starship Captains. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I, I but that's thumbs up for me. I like it. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. I would I would I would I would give that game. You should definitely play this. You should play the game. Mm-hmm. So all CGE games have solid gameplay, interesting design space. I agree. That I'm I'm always really impressed by the stuff they put out. They they uh, clearly have a lot of love for the board game industry. So I'm always happy to see when they put mm-hmm. it release out. Also, yeah, they have a Twitch uh, stream that they they keep up with. Uh, and have they like pay someone to run it? So I think that's really cool. All another right. um, another uh, CGE game that's pseudo Star Trek Simulator is Space Alert. <laughs> so that's a classic, right? <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> that's like that's a very specific episode of Star Trek. Yeah, where everything is going wrong currently right. in the ship and everything's going to blow up. Yeah. Next up, but we that's have a fun, that's fun. Marvel Champions, the card game, living card Ooh. game from Fantasy Flight Ooh. Games. Uh, this is a cooperative card game. It is a living card game, which means that there are sets released for it, expansion sets for in the the um for Marvel Champions. It's it's usually hero packs and villain packs. So you all play as heroes against villain decks that are uh, automated, and you try to defeat them. There are various cooperative uh, scenarios. So yeah, we've played this a lot on stream. We uh right. most recently we played through the X Men campaign. Yeah, the X-Men campaign is the the stuff that came out this year that we were probably the most excited about. Yeah. Uh, the uh, I mean, I don't know. I think everybody in our age bracket grew up with the X-Men cartoon. Um, like it is hard to understate uh, how popular the X-Men were in 1992 and 1993. It was like throughout the and, 90s. They were huge, right? Yeah. 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 Well, they fell off. They fell off of the, the late 90s because that's when Marvel went bankrupt. That's a whole other podcast. <laughs> topic but uh so yeah so that and finally being able to play the x-men in marvel champions was super exciting and i felt like the 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 genesis the mutant genesis stuff really delivered yeah it was um, great it was really good we've played yeah. a lot of x-men i mean we've played a lot of marvel champions and not all of it felt fair we played almost all um, of it right we played all of it except for the sinister yeah. motives box yeah the, the one thing that we haven't played is the spider-man um box set and we didn't finish uh, the Ronin box either, uh, but that's, yeah. But that's from what story. we understand, we're not missing a whole lot just because of ha- the difficulty of the box. Yeah. Um, so, then, so like my journey of Marvel Champions this year was extensive, right? Because I like I went from having played it like two times to having played it a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of times when, when now that we've streamed it a whole bunch of times, yeah. and like the I can't like I, I went back because I have the base game, just like the regular vanilla Marvel Champions at my house, and I played that with some friends. And it really highlighted how much things have evolved and yeah. everything is so changed. different mechanically or like, I guess, yeah. more complex mechanically, but like not necessarily yeah. in an overwhelming way. But the, you know, the base set was very dumbed down as far as the, the rules go. I mean, that's that's any card game, right? It you grow be, yeah. on so, the mechanics. 
so the the thing about the base set is that you did not have choices to make in the decks you built. Yeah, so you basically made were, the Justice deck with X it was Spider-Man yeah. or with, with You had maybe five cards that you could swap around and that was literally it. Like And the heroes were different was, enough because of their hero packs, right? But like if yeah, you're playing yeah, Justice, like, you're playing like this these cards specifically because that's the best cards and that's only like right. that's you have to fill out your deck, right? Yeah, but now Whereas, Yeah, in the X-Men set, we we've subbed out like Colossus is like, okay, he's going to be aggression, just like Kitty. But actually, no, he's going to be this other thing. And yeah, yeah like we subbed up the whole deck. And it used to be that you <laughs> felt like you had to all play different aspects. But I think uh, like Nathan and I were playing Justice the whole time or of uh, of X-Men. In Mojo. Yeah, in Mojo, we were both playing Justice. And then in the uh, the X-Men campaign, Logan and I were both playing aggression. And yeah. we, played, mm-hmm. we, felt ve- it, we felt like very different aggression decks, which was really cool. Yeah. So, it was also I, the game is so a great because now. It, yeah, it's it's I, I think I mean, this is the cream of the crop of Marvel champions for mm-hmm. sure. Like if you're going to if you're going to start Marvel, maybe not maybe start with the base set. But, but if you're going to b- yeah, buy like yeah. an expansion, go with X-Men as the expansion that you buy, because they're yeah. all the characters are super exciting to play as they have a, a like a good like you can they're. I don't know, I want to say like easy to to pick up right away, but. Like I you think feel Shattuck like had, you're learning. They rewarded yeah, so I think multiple Shattuck, plays a lot because I, I think yeah, as I, I, the more I played Cyclops, the more I learned all the plays with him, and like I felt really good about him. Yeah, I think Shadowcat's probably the most difficult character. Uh, maybe like, of maybe all. <laughs> even, maybe Jean Grey is also pretty difficult because there's this that yeah. tug and pull where you're trying to balance the stuff, and we didn't really. You played her for like one it, of it the was one time that yeah. we did. Um, yeah. but, uh, but like Logan, for instance, got way better with shadow cat, the more reps that, that, uh, that you get. Yeah. I mean, I went from, you know, like I said, having played Marvel champions like two times and K- kitty no times to like having like kitty like four times in a row. And by the end of that, I was feeling very confident with my yeah. kitty pride. And I, again, I, I've said this a couple of times and I played Cyclops during Mojo, but Cyclops is my favorite Marvel Champions character that I've ever played. And I, I was still I would still play him more if we had more reason to play him because it was so fun. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed playing Wolverine, which is yeah, Wolverine's I, like sweet. none of y'all know my deal with the name Logan, but like <laughs> I just I've never liked him <laughs> and, and it kind of made me come around on Wolverine. So if it could do that, that that's saying a lot. All right, I think uh, that's. I don't know what we need to keep talking about. World champions. We should talk about it for a while because we put a we put a oh, lot yeah. of time into it, right? But yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I don't think this is going to be any of our cream of the crop because it's not really. I don't know if it really yeah. qualifies, really, because it's it's, you know, like it's, a, it's, a, it's a mainstay. It's evergreen. It's right? evergreen. Yeah. Yeah. I had a ton of fun playing Marvel Champions yeah. this year. If you if you were played Marvel Champions at some point and you and you didn't think there were quite enough options for you. Uh, revisiting the game now will feel completely different. There's just there's also like the, infinite the, options. There's so many heroes. Yeah, and the the Mojo Pack is super generous. Um, that's what we played for the last like three or four streams or whatever. Yeah. And it like the, we didn't even know when y'all got it that it, there was like a whole. Uh, yeah, we thought it was just one scenario. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. But there, it's like a campaign. It it felt really great to play through that. It was funny. All the and all yeah, the scenarios were really fun and noises. unique too. So I think that was mm-hmm. that was definitely another thing that's worth it. So. That is the cream of the crop Marvel from Marvel Champions. Marvel All right, Champions. moving on. We have Nightfall. So Logan did not, did not stream Nightfall with us, but Nightfall is a uh, one to six player game um, that is based around knights fighting demons. And Nathan and I did a stream where we played through the campaign mode of it. So it's designed for like a competitive uh, either one on one or team based gameplay where one team plays knights, one team plays demons. But there's also a campaign that you can play through uh, and it's got like a little it's got like a little sheet where you can fill out where you're going on the campaign and you have a certain amount of time to do things and, and search different areas and you have to fight through different scenarios using your knights against uh, against automated demons and stuff. Yeah, so the campaign mode in this is very reminiscent of Sleeping Gods, which is a game that we did not play on stream, but we've played uh, uh, like a fair bit of. And it's also very similar to Near and Far and Above and Below, other uh, Lock Hat games. And um, so the I would say the campaign mode, we didn't play the versus mode, which um, after playing the campaign mode, I'm not even sure the versus mode is something that I would necessarily enjoy a whole yeah, lot. Yeah, I mean, maybe there's like prob- one time. There's probably Yeah, there's probably a time in my life where I would have, like when I didn't have like enough um, head, like heads up card gaming. And I wanted like a really nice, tight arena battler. Um, 
uh, th this game may have delivered on that then. Uh, but I thought the campaign mode was fairly solid. Um, I'm not sure what the price tag on this box is. Um, I want to say it was like, it wasn't that expensive. I, I, I want to say it was like 30-ish dollars. Okay, yeah, that's a good price. Yeah. Because I think, uh, I think you would be, you would do far worse for a single box um, RPG sort of uh, campaign. My my hesitancy to fully recommend this is that the campaign mode, I think, is not large enough to warrant too many multiple plays. It's maybe like two plays, right? I think I think you could I think you could experience ninety five percent of the campaign if you played through it twice. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I this is not uh, I'm not like full throat endorsing this because we didn't ever like I said didn't ever play the the versus mode. I think there's a specific type of board gamer who likes that heads up strategy squaring off against um, each other uh, that this game was kind of like marketed towards. Yeah, um, I think the problem is that uh, for us, most of those types of games are TCGs, right? Or a card games yeah. of some sort. Anything competitive has has things you can change. Yeah, right. From game to game to make it different. Uh, I mean, in, my, yeah, in I Nightfall, you can't play right? with different knights and stuff, but there's like only so yeah. much you can do, and it's like it's. I don't think it's going to be expanded on. If I guess it is expandable, um, but I don't know if there's sure. plans to do that. So Any, anything is. <laughs> yeah, anything is. This one, this one yeah. probably definitely is, but um, it's just not our type of game as far as like competitive games go. I think. Yeah, yeah. So um, it, this is. If it sounds interesting to you, I would check it out. Um, and I know since we're primarily a TCG channel, there's probably definitely a subset of our players that might be excited for that type of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, I wish I wish the campaign had slightly more flexibility. The thing with like Sleeping Gods is the campaign is so big. I don't know how many times you'd have to play through it to yeah. experience the whole. And it took us yeah, that, forever to get through the one campaign, and we had a different yeah. ending than. Uh, well, there's like so many different endings that we could have experienced something completely different. Yeah. So yeah, it was very clear that we had not really touched on stuff but also i will say that sleeping gods didn't feel exciting enough to go back to so for for us uh, I, it's so the 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 major thing for sleeping gods for me was knowing the amount we were gonna have to play to before we started experiencing different stuff yeah we'd yeah, have to get to like, that stuff it yeah. was it was a, it, like once you play through it the first time you're like okay now we have to play it exactly the same but way optimized and then we can get to see new stuff. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you like the Sleeping Gods style of campaign P Rod, I would definitely check this out. So and and like I said, thirty bucks is honestly not a buy, bad price tag. Yeah. I feel like you could probably get thirty dollars worth 30, of worth of enjoyment yeah. out of it. Uh, how many board games come out these days that are, are actually thirty dollars anymore? Right. Not a many. So. All right. This is a, this is a good bite sized board game, I'd say. That's Nightfall. The cream of the crop. Next up, we have the Dungeon Fighter. Dungeon Fighter. Oh, no. Dungeon Fighter. Dungeon Ooh. Fighter is a cooperative uh, dungeon fighting dexterity, dexterity game. So dexterity game. There yeah. is a target in the middle of the board that you have to bounce dice onto and try to hit various point values on the board to do damage to the current monster that the party is fighting. And everyone has uh, their own character they're playing as, and they're trying to um, do as much damage as they can turn. I'm, I'm looking at the pictures on board game geek and they're like all the old versions. So I think we got the second edition is what we played. We played the Kickstarter yeah, edition. So these okay. are all kind of old pictures. Yeah. I I'm seeing things that don't make a lot of sense on these, but it's fine. So there's very, <laughs> there's also various rules that can come into play. Like you have to, throw the dice with your with someone else's hand or you have to like flick it or you have to like hold it with the flat of your palm and like roll it in or use chopsticks it to toss it onto the board so that's what made it really interesting some monsters made you do certain things to to be able to hit the target so so like dexterity games are tough because all of them have to compete with croconol which yeah, is yeah. extremely good and simple and so it's like if you can't teach it in five seconds uh slash like have longevity where there's a high skill skill ceiling, then it's dexterity games have a hard hard road to hoe. But I feel like Dungeon Fighter did that because a it's cooperative, which is different than everything else, and it's not complex. Like Catacombs is a dexterity game that's semi co op. Like one player plays the DM, and everybody else is like people going in the dungeon. But there's like a ton of setup, and everybody has to know a ton of rules. This is like throw the dice at the at the target. You want to hit the target with the dice. Yeah. And yeah. that's immediately obvious. And yeah. like everybody could have had like, you know, three or four drinks or whatever and still ha be having more fun because it's because you're 
it's everything is stupid in the game. <laughs> I, I will comment that Dungeon Fighter was one of the hardest games we've played this year. Yeah, we, so we didn't beat it, right? Did we beat it? I don't think we beat we didn't it. Beat it. I, I think we, we got to the time. final. I think we got to the final boss. I think we lost and, the final boss. And we got crushed. Like yeah. we did not I, have enough. I it, revised that history in my head. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we beat it. I'm pretty sure we didn't. And there I, were, we were uh, even... the cool thing about this the second edition is that there were four different boxes that all came with different types of dice and different implements and different ways that to, uh, to affect the dice. And you could combine all those into one box and play it all together. Uh, we only got two of the boxes, but I was like tempted to order the other ones. It's yeah. like, cause the, the, this set, as you can see, it has D sixes, um, or well, I'm, I'm looking at the D sixes. Yeah. I have it. Yeah. But yeah, so we also have like D8 version and like there's I think there's D12, the D12 but basically D12s, yeah. the more sides your dice has, the easier the game is. Um, yeah, because it's more predictable where the dice is going to land, whereas a six sided die just goes anywhere. Um, a 12 sided die is more round and it's probably going to roll forward. There's only um, D10s as well that we didn't play. Yeah, uh, I would, be, this game's really sweet. I would definitely um recommend this game if you're looking for more of a lighthearted game good party game um, too i think it's one to six I players think so i think too. yeah yeah a lot of a lot of people can play and you, you, know, reason, of... you could you could you could play with more people right I I guess you could. Not to. yeah you could because you're it's based on the amount of dice that you have right mm-hmm. so in a six player so in a six player game like everybody's going to fight like every other fight or something like that yeah you'll, Everybody. It might. I mean, like, it'll probably taper off enjoyment the more that, like, at yeah. a certain point of players. There's probably a sweet spot for, as far as the number of players for this, but um, uh, it's so it's so goofy that if you're uh, having fun even during fun. other people's turn because they're just trying to do yeah. stupid stuff. Yeah, or they're having to use your yeah, arm like, to throw use, the die. Yeah, use this awful uh, looking glass to see through the yeah. spirit world. The spirit world sucks, y'all. You can't <laughs> see anything. <laughs> yeah, it's lame. Uh, so this is another Anybody game that we. You they can see spirits. They're lying to you. <laughs> they're a liar. <laughs> they're or they're a chiropractor. So this one, um, this is we another game that we said we immediately wanted to play again after we were done, right? So we did as we streamed it again the next week. Yeah. So same thing with mm-hmm. like Starship Captains. This is another check mark in that little box of us and, saying, let's and just play the this next, again. The, the next party we were at, uh, we we brought it out for that as well. Yeah, and that's it, a big. And that's a big like plus. It's a big plus yeah. right there. And games the wishlist as we go. There you go. And remember, you can always <laughs> go check out the VOD for the old streams of these if you want to see us play them. All right, so that's Dungeon Fighter. The cream of the crop! And next up, we have Decorum. This oh, yeah. is a cooperative-ish uh, deduction it's cooperative. game. It's fully cooperative. It's fully cooperative, it's fully yeah. cooperative. Um, But you do end up yelling at each other, so it's not like fully cooperative <laughs> it's, it's it's i would i would call it fully cooperative with role-playing elements that are yeah. you yelling at each other yeah okay <laughs> so the object of the game is to uh everyone has has goals has personal goals they have to meet as far as how the layout of the house looks so uh there's you can see there's various colors of furniture and different types of furniture different shapes and different rooms and then the rooms can all be painted so your 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 card might say like all car all upstairs rooms have to be painted red, and then someone else's card says something else, right? But you're you can't tell them what your your goals are. All you can do is make a move as far as swapping a color out, sw- removing a piece of furniture, and there was one more thing I can't remember right now. You could paint a room, right? Um, yeah. And then everyone yeah. else at the table yeah. says either I like that or that was good or I hate it or I was neutral on it. And then yeah. from from those Which, actions, yeah, you have to derive. Everybody gets creative with that. Yeah, yeah. My the, my favorite line was like we were at Gen Con. First of all, this was our like our cream of the crop for Gen Con. Oh yeah, uh, that's my like, favorite game. As our Con. friend group. Um, but Nathan was like, "We keep going further and further from the light of God," and that was <laughs> the funniest thing. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, that's the kind of thing you say back and forth to each other in this game. Yeah, it's decorum. Decorum really pushes your vocabulary um, for for finding ways to express your disgust. We weren't. Right? You're not really supposed to say more <laughs> than like uh, I hated I it or I liked it, but that. we 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 bent that rule a little bit for fun. I mean, it's a co-op game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That like literally, you're playing this to have fun, and yeah. if you do, if you don't, if you're not rigid with the rules, it's going to be a hilarious game because of things like that. Yeah, and so yeah. there. Uh, Did you? 
there's various scenarios you... that the, the box comes with. And I think there's like 30 scenarios for two players and like a campaign, like a mini campaign for two players. So Nathan, and I played through a little bit of that and it gives you like roles to play and, uh, and, and goals. Fun. Yeah. And so like, and even, even within the roles that you're playing are hints as far as the solution for the house. So I thought that was really oh, cool yeah. too. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I was, I was going to ask you, Logan, if you got, had a chance to play the, the two player campaign mode, because um, it's a, it's, it's really funny because there's, I think my favorite was the, was the Duke. Um, <laughs> the Duke and what was the, uh, I can't remember I her name. It was like Miss Sally or something. I can't something. remember her name. Yeah. It was the Duke of Miss Sally, which was like an Elvis impersonator. And, um, uh. and so like the dialogue was just like straight up like Elvis level dialogue. Um, <laughs> yeah. So there needs to be a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in the bathroom. <laughs> um. <laughs> so the, uh, the, I think now the app is out so they can, it can auto generate um, puzzles so that you don't have like a finite number of, of rooms that yeah, you're the, constructing. So, so to Nathan's point of asking if I had done the two player, it's a hard sell for my boyfriend to do a two player board game. Yeah. Like he's like, why aren't we just playing a video game? So I, I get yeah, that. We, yeah. We've, we've done the three and four. Um, but the, it is kind of a limited number of three and four player scenarios that they're, they're the same. It's like, a, I think there's like eight, um, three and four player scenarios, but the, the addition of that app means that you can kind of like, they have a bunch of rules. That Cause if you wanted to like play this with, uh, with someone who'd already played it or like if you, if you want to play this with new people and you've already played all the scenarios, then you kind of have to hold back a little bit, like hold back your knowledge of, of what the solution is. So the, yeah. the app, the, the app solves that problem where it's generating something new every time. Well, a lot of it's, uh, I think the enjoyment of the game is the tug and pull between people. Uh, and yeah. if you if you knew every solution, you don't you wouldn't have to. There are like because the, the scenarios find different ways to express how you're supposed to get to the solution. And once you've played through it, then like that, that would become less of a challenge. So I'm glad, I'm glad that the app exists to, to give more variety. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So. It's really, really important for the long tail of the game. I, I want to say that like this game feels like the process of getting to know somebody. Yes. Like yeah. it does a good job at mirroring. It would probably that. be a good like, being... date game. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you would yeah. be, you'd learn a lot about uh, how, you, how each other gets mad. Puts puts a green statue in the bathroom. Red flag. Yeah, it's a big red flag. <laughs> Haunted statue not in the I, kitchen. We already have an eyeball guy Haunted downstairs. <laughs> we don't need another eyeball guy in the bathroom. <laughs> so that is decorum. Thinks, thinks thinks there's an upward limit on eye, eyeball guys. <laughs> red flag. Big red flag. <laughs> big red flag. The cream of the crop. Next up, we have stars of Acarios. This is a cooperative uh, campaign-based space game. Uh, you all play like fighter pilots, and you're traveling around the galaxy trying to, I don't know, BSG your way back to civilization. <laughs> Some sort yeah, of, right? Like After something we're goes trying wrong. To, we're trying to Star Fox slash BSG yeah. slash... It's, it's got, got big got, Star yeah, Fox energy. Uh, yeah, it was like, you have to do a barrel roll uh, quite often in this game, and I don't know. Like, so this is a game that, uh, f pr like, f more famous than us, Board Game Channel, no pun included, uh, widely panned. Like, they did not oh, like yeah, it like at all. Like, lambasted, like, double barreled, yeah. just like. Mm -hmm. And I can see the point uh, that was being made there. It did feel to me as if the enemies were half baked. Um, I think Stars of Acarius would benefit greatly from a second edition at some point, mm -hmm. um, just because I think the enemies themselves, it's, it, it, it wasn't... So Gloomhaven, when you knew how enemies acted, because uh, I think, uh, honestly, it's probably better to describe this as space Gloomhaven yeah, to a yeah. degree mm -hmm. um, than, than necessarily like a Star Fox simulator. Um, but uh, in Gloomhaven, when you knew how enemies acted... Um, that was, I feel like, part of the challenge of the game was knowing, okay, that's a cultist. Yeah, like, if but here's what it's probably going to do. Yeah. Here, it's if gonna, we don't it's prioritize, make a skeleton. Yeah. yeah. If we don't prioritize removing it, we're going to end up with more enemies to kill than 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 we have to. And in this game, it felt like the enemies were like uh, '80s arcade villains, where they moved in really tight patterns and had very yeah, relatable right. attacks. Right. Um, and it, it didn't quite feel super threatening. 
Yeah, I, the, there well, was that one scenario fair. when literally we 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 should just like the art. We were like, can we just not do anything this turn and win? <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. So like, to be fair, uh, we did not play through past like the introductory stuff, right? Yeah, and I felt, and I'm, sure, I also, I'm sure that's a big deal. I I also thought the destinies. So another comparison is like the board game destinies, which we were going to play on stream uh, this year, but the. Uh, App Steam app permit. did not work. Well, so, the Steam app wouldn't yeah. uh, use a camera. To, yes, to scan the Steam app cards. wouldn't. It, the Steam app wouldn't use a camera, so we ended up having to um, bail. And the the game that we played, it's actually an older game, but a, a game that we played will show up later uh, in this list. Um, there, there's a Destiny's aspect of this game that I thought was pretty interesting. It was pretty neat. Um, and I felt like overall that was more enjoyable than the space combat. We were like and exploring did, the, the planet. That was really yeah. cool. Yeah. I liked yeah. upgrading my spaceship. There were, there were a lot of, and, and the fact that like all of our ships had different aspects that we could focus on, um, yeah. you know, and we were encouraged to diversify our like, weapons portfolios and yeah. stuff like that. I felt like I was the nimble one that was doing a bunch of little pot shots to everything. And then like I, Justin was very movement focused, like could get anywhere. And then you had like heavier firepower, if I remember correctly. Yeah. yeah and I had, I had a, a like a support role so I could like give shields to people. There was like so I, there was like a there was a lot to like. Here. Yeah. For a moment to um, moment, I was really excited by this game. I mean, like, I still yeah. wanted to play more of it. We just didn't have yeah. time to. Yeah. Yep. I agree. So I'm not, I'm not like down on the game at all. I was I actually really liked no. the game and I liked I, a lot of what it was doing. Yeah, I had so. a blast. Yeah, I wish I wish we got to play more because from what I understand that that's where it starts falling apart. Is like once you we get past more. the introductory <laughs> stuff, uh, it things things so maybe freeze. <laughs> the, maybe not. the flaws the flaws start getting harder and harder to ignore. Um, so who knows? Uh, uh, like, a yeah. point I want to mention is that this box was like two hundred fifty dollars, so it is an oh, investment. Wow. In that. <laughs> <laughs> so. There's so for that. the amount that we played, maybe by night didn't really get our minds with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's true. <laughs> so that is stars of Acarios. The cream of the crop. Next up, um, I want to point out we like I put across the obelisk on the list, um, but obviously that's not going to have a board game geek page. But it is like a fun tabletop on Steam experience. Yeah, we'll I, get there. I think we should. Uh, yeah. I, I have those Steam ones last on my list. Ah, so I see. But okay. I pulled up the Steam pages for them. Oh okay, yeah, we got Cascadia. Uh, banger classic oh, love it we got this in gen yeah. con 2021 20, yeah yeah this is just like the most chill game like it's still like very you teach it to anybody yeah but it's easy it's just like put bears next to bears you know like yeah this it, it, all of them are very easy you just put down little tiles and it's just a chill time it's like a it's like a rainy day with a cup of coffee kind of game yeah so it's I, competitive, I, it's a competitive what, would you call it like a was it is like a tableau it's not really tableau building it's more like it's like biome building and you're yeah, biome. Dra- but it's a drafting game. You're it is competitive. It's comparable to say something like Carcassonne, except you're not like connecting to other people. Yeah. Um, I I would be hard pressed to find a board game uh, that has this much complexity that's also this accessible. It's so mm-hmm. easy to teach. Right? And I think yeah. you could teach it to pretty it's, it's pretty young kids too. Yeah, it's like I, this is a game that I think could could what is this? land a shelf space. On some These 3D printed stuff. Right there. Yeah, I know. I yeah. don't know how oh this gosh. works in gameplay because you like know what you're pulling out of the bag, right? But right. So but, the um, I mean, those uh, are neat. They are. Cool. So I was gonna say, I I uh, this this year I uh, through the local library was doing board game demos, like part like partnered with our store to do board game demos. And I tried to to teach um, some of these older players how to play Ticket to Ride, and it was like pulling teeth. Just for Ticket to Ride. Those where, ticket to ride. Yeah, wow. With Ticket to Ride, yeah. And so it was one of those where I was just like, I wish I had Cascadia here because uh, you literally yeah. just <laughs> catch things up. Didn't Cascadia yeah. win Spiel, Spiel DR? Spiel of Dr. Yeah. Like you're you were showing off an image where it that had was, the, that was the Spiel one. Okay, I was wondering on the box. Yeah. So yeah, I uh, I mean Cascade is is a game that. I would recommend to everybody to own a copy of that. That's how yeah. good this game is. Yeah. 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 It's it, great. It's great. Stone Cold it's just Platinum. really good. I, there's not much more to say about it, except that it's always a good time yeah. and it's, it's mm-hmm. for, it feels good as you're playing it. It feels good after it's over. So uh, it Cascadia, definitely a thumbs up forever. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on. 
that's that's Cascadia. We have the cream of the crop. Star Wars Outer Rim unfinished business expansion. Yeah, so oh, Outer Rim's yeah. been out for four years or so, maybe three we years. Got, we um, got it's the been out, out for a while. Announcement of a, an expansion for this. But, yeah, so if you um, if you looked at the original box, you notice the card numbers jumped around, and you're like, oh, okay, they have an expansions planned for this, but there's no telling what. Uh, well, what but like so many, like there's lots of plans from uh, from Fantasy Flight, you know, four years ago that yeah. <laughs> did not come to fruition. Yeah. So right. I did not, I did not expect to come back to this game. <laughs> yeah. Now, I will say uh, this, if you like Outer Rim, this is more Outer Rim. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So the the Outer Rim, for me, filled the hole that Runebound 3rd Edition did not, that, like, created. Um, mm-hmm. Runebound it was one of my favorite Fantasy Flight games, and uh, uh, Justin may remember... Um, us playing Runebound at Origins in like 2004 or whatever, um, and we played the crap out of Runebound. That was great. Um, and I the the I I've got a, fir- a first ed copy somewhere that is just beat to pieces from the amount of shuffling. They didn't make board game sleeves back then, right? Yeah, you just slam yeah. the cards yeah. together. So you're just you're just shuffling the cards. So I have I have a uh, um, and then Runebound Second Edition. I played some and. Uh, Runebound Third Edition is like does not meet the the needs of uh, it doesn't really deliver what I felt like the earlier versions of Runebound were able to do. I love those games yeah, because Runebound felt like you were in Breath of the Wild, like you were all yes. playing a little Breath of the Wild. Yeah, it you're was, you're great. meandering around wherever you walk. There's something to do. There's something to fight. There's something that's actively trying to kill you. There's <laughs> something, some obstacle to overcome. An Outer Rim delivers on all of that with Star Wars flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good. And it feels like you're like, just like roaming the galaxy and, and doing Star Wars shit. Yeah, uh, yeah. And speaking of flavor, like specifically, this is you are one of the bounty hunters in Star Wars, and it feels very much like you're the, the things that the game wants you to do are like, you know, sometimes you got to sell somebody up the river and it's yeah. fine. Like <laughs> you got to do yeah. what you got to do to gonna... get by in the galaxy. Right. Yeah. Sometimes you got Maz Kanata in your in your car, and like a stormtrooper comes up, and you're like, "Have her, I don't care. Yeah, I'm not trying. Yeah. I don't want any trouble." My uh, <laughs> so going back to like Starship Captains, my complaint about this game is it sometimes takes like a while to get back to your turn, and then you don't really accomplish much on your turn. Uh, that's my biggest complaint I think about this game is that you yeah, can you kind of like brick a turn like pretty easily. Game. So the game uh, takes a long time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so uh, the I, I've played a, a a chunk of Outer Rim off stream. And I, uh, people who've never played the game before don't know how to win. Mm, um, yeah. It's a lot like Keyforge in that aspect, where it's like, oh, don't take it, like, just go do s- stuff, just wander around. Like, you, you can stumble into victory points somewhere along the way. Um, you know, if it's your first time playing the game, don't feel bad. Just go do cool stuff. And yeah. then you know well, how to thing, win. Right? Like yeah. the game presents these things and it's like, it'd be fun if you did this. And, and again, that feels like Breath of the Wild, right? You might not be actually pursuing a goal, but you're having fun. So it, like, it's a game. I don't know that maybe that's a good thing or a bad thing, depending on who you I, are. I, it depends on who the players it, are. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the thing is, is you could turn anything into victory points if you know how to. Right. And new players have a hard time connecting that I want to go do something. I want to go fight in a space battle and then turning that into victory points. I think it's right? also hard to stop someone who's winning from winning. Well, yeah. I, I, so I, I actually, I think that's a new player problem too, yeah. is that uh, you, you realize maybe, that you're losing and then you're like, Oh, I can't actually win because, <laughs> because they yeah, has so got all the points. He's about to, the he's about to win next majority, turn. The vast majority of the catch up mechanics in the game only work against people that are ahead of you uh, right okay. yeah, yeah so if you know what you're doing you can stockpile that stuff so if somebody tries to jump in front of uh, you you can go after them guns blazing um but like like i said that's like a new player thing if you only play like a couple of times you may not uh, you don't know realize that. That. yeah yeah so, so it's a it, it, i mean it's good it's a, it, like if you have if you have a like a day to game and you, the, the, I think you could do a lot worse than this game. And like, playing with Star Wars really fans, especially. 
Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think from now, I've never had a chance to play Rebellion because Rebellion came out at a time where I did I, I wasn't getting to play a whole lot of tabletop games. And from what I understand, the expansion for Rebellion makes it feel like you're playing the original trilogy. Um, uh, Star it Wars really out cool, of yeah, yeah. Star Wars out of Rim, on the other hand makes you feel like you're playing an all that expanded universe stuff from the 90s. Yeah. Is what mm-hmm. that feels like. Um yeah. the the time before the prequels this this really captures that um you know the the cool stuff is not necessarily the Jedi or the Jedi relationships um with you know the the Sith and stuff like that. It's the I've got I've got two credits to my name. I've got a gun and I've got a starship. I'm going to make it everybody's problem. You know, yep. that's yeah. what this game captures. It really makes it you wonder. Like, the, the best, like yeah, the best Star Wars show had no lightsabers in it, right? So it make, really right. makes you oh, think. Yeah. yeah, this was a so this was honestly a year where um, I had written off the Star Wars franchise um, where I was like, I am just not going to really care what happens to Star Wars from this point forward. Um, but uh, Outer Rim had been out for a while, and it was like one of the the, the, the last things of Star Wars that I actually enjoyed. Um, this expansion was really good, and then Andor on top of that was just so no, so man. Andor. enjoyable. I, it was yeah, so good. So. Holy we can easily turn this into an Andor. <laughs> I could talk about Andor just, forever. <laughs> we just start talking about Andor. We're Andor Andes. Yeah, Andor yeah. Andy. Oh, so okay, one one final point I wanted to make about this game is that it it invoked in me the feeling of when I was a child and I was playing Pokemon Master Quest. Because for oh, yeah. some reason, this yeah. game gives me the same yeah. feeling of Pokemon Master Quest. I guess part of it is like pogs you're looking at pogs that the have best. different like characters on yeah. them and stuff, and you're like trying to find certain ones and stuff. But uh, I, I have very fond memories of playing Pokemon Master Quest with uh, Nathan's brother at their house, like when we were yeah. eight years old. It was good times. That game is not good. It's like roll dice and oh, try to get lucky. Game. But it's, uh, it, it's it's nostalgic. It's nostalgic. But there's there's yeah. there's, a, there's a certain like intangible aspect about that game that. Yeah. That like there's an idea of that game that if fully realized would would make a wonderful board 100%, 100%. game. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. And and here we are without a rim. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fully realized Pokemon Master Quest. All right, so that is out of the out of rim. <laughs> Star Wars out of rim. The cream of the crop. Next up, we have Radlands. This is a game that Nathan and I played. It's a two player competitive uh, uh, card yeah. game, and it was it, it was so you basically like. Play was it from the same deck? Did you draw from the same deck? Yes. In the middle, I, I'm trying to remember. We only played this game one time, so I don't yeah. have all the it mechanics was, in my brain. Yeah, it was a it was a really interesting game. Um, the honestly, it shares some. It felt like it's a, one of the card game necromancy games that we played. It felt like it shared a, a not zero amount dark of DNA. Age. Not not uh not dark age. Not um, dark age. It felt like it felt like the same flavor as dark age. Yeah, so it is a post-apocalyptic thing. I was going to yeah. say um, on the edge, okay, because yeah. you had the silos and you had to like try to defend strategically. Yeah, um, uh, Redlands was a game that I think I could have absolutely have played more of. I would, yeah, I would still, um, I would play more of it. As far as like competitive games, and we were talking about like compared to uh, the Nightfall. Nightfall. This is a this is like a deck of cards and some stuff, right? So this is like much easier yeah. to carry around. Uh, I, I would I would pull this out like you were like you said this is one of those at a magic tournament you're between rounds or whatever you play this yeah so I've got epic in my hand right now um, mm-hmm. yeah uh, and so this is that style of game where it's like a, a hand of it's going to last fifteen minutes and there's enough strategic decisions that it feels like you are actually playing a game you're not just rolling dice to see who wins same thing I have a right next to it I've got a um, uh. Star Realms. Oh, yeah. Right. Yep. So like both of those, both of those, if you like that style of game, you like that heads up um, uh, playing cards fast and furious. Uh, th- these games fill that role. Right. So, and just going through these cards, looking at the art, I'm, I'm appreciating it more again because it's just so good. Big, yeah, it's big like fan. A good art. Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, it, it, it's a uh, it's a it's a it's a game. Um, that uh, probably deserves a little bit wider recognition. So, agreed. Yeah. Hey, what's up? And I, I, I'm showing right now that there are these like deluxe playmats you can give the deluxe edition, and they are super cool. They are nice. I like considered getting those after we played it though at night. So yeah, yeah. That's 
that's Radlands. Uh, definitely recommend it if you like bite-sized competitive experiences. If you're if that's your kind of game, I think this fits right in there. It's perfect for that. Mm-hmm. So there you go. The cream of the crop. Next up, we have Return to the Dark Tower. So this is a mm. uh, Restoration Games release of uh, the Dark Tower board game from what the eighties. I guess we're yeah. stand clear of the tower. There's a <laughs> giant dark tower in the middle of the board that poops out skulls onto a map, and you have to defend the map against certain scenarios. And it was a, it was a lot of fun. We we played it what twice. Yeah. There, there's it's an app integration. Uh, three. So the app three times. Uh, the app yeah. controls the tower. It controls like the monsters, what they're doing. It tells you what's going on in the world, and we're all playing cooperatively to try and stop the tower from. And whatever one, the fiend is. One really, one really important difference, I think, from most games that use an app heavily is that you are constantly looking at the board and the tower in yeah. this game. Like, you're not always just, it's not just an iPad app. Like, um, what's that crime one? Uh, the cr- oh, cr- Chronicles, Chronicles of, crime. of Crime. Yeah. Yeah. That one's like, that's just read know, an iPad, the game. Yeah. Just read an iPad, the game, which I'm not, I mean, and like, it's a good like game. Chronicles it's still a good crime. game. It's good. It's just like that. That's something to be said is like this, like you're not paying a whole bunch of money for this tower to then just look at of an iPad, you know? Right. Exactly. But the board, yeah, the I tower was... is very satisfying as far as what it's doing. It's, it's menacing. It's a menacing presence on the board. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the yeah, app... It'll just like light up in red and you're like, oh, God, what? Yeah, I was going to say the app does a really good job of adding to the the, the flavor, right? It, it pulls you into the setting. You know, it's like this it's this dark fantasy setting. It's not like purely the dark tower, the book. Right. But, um, you know, it's it's clear. It's like very clear where it's uh, source, where the source material is drawn from, came from. And, uh, you know, so the, the app gives you, you know, it, like the 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 screeches of monsters and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. Like the barbarians when they like swarm onto the board. And so, but yeah, it's a, a the. A, the app board games, I felt like, have been on the cusp of kind of taking over the market for a long time. Um, I'm honestly, I'm glad that they haven't. I'm glad that they're like yeah. kind of like supplemental. I'm glad that there's still a space for traditional board games uh, in the market. Um, but the the Dark Tower is one of the is like one of, like a, a fully realized app game, in my opinion. So. Jay Field, like to your point, we, we talked about Cascade and Decorum a little bit earlier, so I'm glad they you, uh, glad you added those to your, your repertoire. They're good stuff. But and Keyforge also a good game. Very good. <laughs> my uh, second, my one complaint about Dark Tower, or I guess one of my complaints about it, is the like the, the heroes. I wanted more hero options. Like I feel like all the heroes kind of played the same every game. Like each individual hero yeah. played the same every game. Uh, I don't know if you're you could like take your level ups in different orders, right? But um, they all filled a certain specific role. Yeah, I, yeah, each hero that I played, I felt like there were very correct choices. Yeah. And then the other level ups were, I don't like I, in a game like this, I hate to think of like a level up being as like a trap and being like a skill testing element, but it kind of felt that way. Yeah. I don't even really yeah. know how you would fix that. I mean, just make some of the skills better that are, that suck, you know, like, yeah, or just you have like, to do is make give like more options. More guy or yeah. Whatever. And yeah, like to Justin's point, if there was eight heroes in the box instead of four, there were uh, and there were expansion heroes. We didn't play with the expansion, and there was like two more heroes in there. So, I'm, honestly, I'm not sure what how much design space there is for other. Yeah, heroes I'm not sure there. either. Yeah, I'm I'm the designer. Yeah, Logan made it. Logan made all <laughs> Just our cool to let stuff. You know, I made. <laughs> except for that, except for the wicked art that Justin has. That that's oh, oh sorry, you're talking about Jay Philippeg. I was like, Logan designed the Dark Tower. The very board impressive. Game? I made the Dark Tower, and I also wrote those books. Um, <laughs> my pen name is Stephen. Well, King. that makes wow. it easier to trash talk them. <laughs> no, I've just done the graphics for for y'all. So there you go. That's Dark Tower. The cream of the crop. Next up, we have a game about zoos. Oh, Ark Nova. <laughs> mega, mega banger alert! Game. Omega banger. So you are <laughs> you are building a zoo and populating with animals. That's it. That's the yeah. game. Yeah. Yep. I mean, That's well, you're also doing either. <laughs> 
conservation efforts. You, you might yeah, you might go yeah. into conservation efforts, or and you also want to make your zoo wicked cool. Yeah, so people want to come. Tell to us it. how you feel about Ark Nova, Nathan. I love this game. Like uh, I I sat down and I was like, okay, there's a lot to look at here, but once you get through about two rounds of of the game, everything clicks into place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, every single like every single symbol on the board on every piece. There's a there you are you have so much information in front of you. It's it's in, it's actually very difficult to process when you start playing, but once you get into it and you're and you go through just you know a hand or so, um, you you know exactly you're honing in on different parts of it. There's so many things to juggle. You're juggling like 14 different resources at any given time but it doesn't feel that way and you also have to like try to, right. to d- decide which of your things you're going to be targeting like what yes. what of your personal pursuits you're going to be targeting what actions you want to level up first what a- type of animals you want to go to i like this is a game that's very similar to terraforming mars or race for the galaxy or roll for the galaxy um except that i think that the denseness that you're talking about the complexity is always lightened by the fact that you have little cute little animals you build your <laughs> zoo with. It's really cute. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, it, you, like, like sometimes, like, if you're having too too hard of a decision, you can just make the decision based on cuteness, and that's fine. It'll yeah, and it's not, it's not necessarily strategically wrong. If you, uh, <laughs> uh, to Yo-Yo Milkworm's point, if you played Terraforming Mars and you didn't like it, um, this game is... Terraforming Marsist. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right like, now. Like, I do not like terraforming Mars, but I like this game. So, so I'm, I'm on the same. I'm on the same boat. Like yeah, I, 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 I do not like playing terraforming Mars. It but, does nothing but for me. My main, my main reason that I hate terraforming Mars is that it's boring. It like it looks stupid. Yeah. It's just this blank, awful. Because it's Mars. So yeah, yeah, of course it is. It's this blank, Mars awful sucks. place. And then, and then you make it. Slightly more awful because you send asteroids at all your opponents. Yeah, which is there's not no fun like either. play other. Well, there is some other player attacking in this game, but it's it doesn't feel super bad. It like doesn't. It's harder. To, it's harder to just like straight up make a and move. Usually, it only affects people that are ahead of you. Also, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, yeah. It's 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 really hard to make a move in this game that just like throws the whole strategy into disarray. So. Yeah. Whereas Terraform Mars absolutely has that. Like you, you. I mean, the times that I've played it, I, uh, it's just been like all of a sudden, all my plans came crashing down because a literal asteroid hit me in the face. Like <laughs> that's not going to happen in this game. <laughs> yeah, nobody's crashing asteroids into the the penguin exhibit. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't <laughs> know why. It, we does, it, I would say it's it feels. I think it's got more going on than Terraforming Mars, but I didn't like. It didn't really feel that way because everything fits together so well. Once you like take everything yeah. in, and it doesn't take that long to figure out either. Yeah, it's hard yeah. for me to describe exactly what it is that differentiates this between terraforming. So I guess I guess part of it is in terraforming Mars, um, there's a phase where you're looking at the cards that you want to keep for your turn, and you're deciding which ones to hang on to or not. And you can effectively lose the game during that phase and not realize it until much later. Yeah, oh, yeah, and, that's yeah. And, totally true. And Arc Nova, I feel like there's way more escape routes. Oh, for sure. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You can definitely so, like you can definitely like gain a strategy mid game that'll win you the game. I think. Yeah, I, I really like, and I want to hammer on like we're, we're trying to get around like what the core difference is between this and Terraforming Mars are, but I think th- that the the biggest one is like at its core, Terraforming Mars is a deeply cynical game about capitalism and how it can ruin something. And at its core, this game is fun and like wholesome and you're building a zoo and you're concerned about the planet. Yeah, like it's like you it's, make it is trying better. to bring light to like conservation efforts. So yeah, that's cool. And we all can yeah. appreciate animals. Love it. All right. That's Ark Nova. Slow can to Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> we have now that time you killed me. The this it, is, it is a long Ark Nova. I, Ark Nova is a lot like Terraforming Mars in that for several times you play it, it's going to be really, really long. Um, but the uh, the 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 better everybody is at the game, the less time it takes. That time it you didn't killed take me. Us four hours though, did it? Yeah. Well, okay, we, pl- we played we played some long Ark Nova games off stream. So yeah, that time. Yeah. You killed me. It's a two-player competitive game akin to chess with three simultaneous chess boards where pieces move 
on different boards based on what board you move a piece on, and there are different rules because each board of chess is a different era in time, past, present, and future. Yeah. And I've never uh, been as bad at a game as that and <laughs> still had fun, right? It was it's wild. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff you can do. You can time travel back to previous boards, but then you leave a clone of yourself in the present board and you only have so many clones you can make before you're you create an anomaly. Uh, but you're trying to kill your all the opposing versions of yourself. No, it's not it's not yourself, is it? Your your opponent is it, someone else. But you're trying to you're determine try, who yeah. determined tri to time travel. Yes, you're trying to you're trying to figure out which of you invented time travel by killing the only person who could stop you from inventing time travel. Which is the or other person that might have been from primer? Stop primer them the from telling the yeah. world that you killed them while inventing time travel. Oh, what it doesn't it doesn't matter. It doesn't we're gonna be I'm gonna have to borrow the phrase from Looper where we're gonna be drawing diagrams on Dakins all the whole time here to describe what happens. <laughs> so this is a game if you, if you like uh, games like like chess, like uh, strategic games, this is good. And this this scratches that itch. And it also has elements it's... of like sort of like a legacy game where there's there's things to unlock as you play, um, and different components you can use in different game modes you can play in the game. It's, this is a zero luck game. Zero luck. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> zero luck at all so wow. there are players who enjoy games where they don't have to rely on any randomness at all yeah so yeah uh this I, is zero luck the game. humor in this game is very good the rule book was hilarious all the like scenarios are really funny too so that was that's also another thing that's uh, that would be worth it this is a game i probably wouldn't play again because i'm not a super big fan of those times of types of brain burning games i think during our streams of this we were sitting there in silence just like thinking as hard yeah. as possible <laughs> for a long time, was, you were saying it. You were saying it didn't make a very good stream. It was not. It was not that bad. Because so the thing was, is I was like, any move I make, I'll die. Yeah, but I can't <laughs> say what I want to do. I can do this thing, but as long as Justin doesn't catch it, maybe I'll kill him. But I can't say out loud what's in KeyForge. Like, there's very big swingy turns. So when Justin and I are describing our turns, there's a lot to describe. You know. And you get to you get to do the villain type thing. And that game, you can't do the villain thing until you've won. Right. Right. So you're just kind of sitting um, there, like trying to plot in your brain silently. Yeah. If you're playing it so, like uh, against someone online uh, and you, they couldn't hear you, that'd be a different story. But yeah, it's yeah. it's a great game. And if you like this kind of game, definitely recommend it. I had fun with it. I probably wouldn't play it again unless it was with someone who really wanted to play it. I would be happy to then, but. Uh, it wouldn't be something I pulled out willingly. <laughs> so yeah, I would have to. This is a game I would play to the point where I got good at it, and then I'd never touch it again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right, because then no one would so play with ever, you for sure. If I if, right, right, they would and have no ever, fun. But that way, if I ever found myself in a life or death situation involving time traveling, I'd be ready for You'd it. Be set. All right, so that's that time. The cream of the crop. You killed me. Next up is billionaire banshee. I don't remember. This, this is game. a funny game. Oh, this is the game where you're like. It's the dating game. The dating game with yeah. uh, cards. Okay. And yeah. So like you have stuff. it's billionaire bench. It's everything's in the title, right? Yeah. There's a you you would you marry this person if they're a billionaire, but they constantly scream very loudly because <laughs> they're a bench. I see. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So a good party game, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's great. Like the, like we found that the content lasts about like two games. Two games. Yeah. <laughs> for for one individual. You're like that's the but, joke. Yeah. Well, it's not it's not just that it's a joke, right? It's like you've seen this card and it's kind of you kind of moved mm, on. Yeah. But at the same time you can bring it out with a completely different group of people and then it's like you find a bunch of new information out about somebody. Like pepperoni nipples. I think that's a deal breaker. Uh, other people think that that sounds delicious. I, I don't understand them. A deal breaker. I don't want to. I can't do this again. <laughs> Come on, Logan. Yeah, I, I will say. I will say. There's. There's probably gamers out there who are not comfortable meandering into that territory. Um, so if yeah. your group, if your group cannot handle content about sexual desires and stuff like that. This game like leans real heavy it into does. that. Uh, did this, we, we, we had to remove had to cards, right? We removed yeah, about we, a yeah. third of the cards. Yeah, 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 like a third of the cards of, of the game out before stream just so that we wouldn't have to like approach that on stream. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. you find a new group. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> it's that easy. <laughs> All right. That is Billionaire well, Banshee. I, what I'm saying is don't play Billionaire Banshee with your family. Definitely don't, not. Don't go. Don't go on Christmas break to go visit yeah. like your aunt and uncle and then play billionaire I, I 
I made a mistake. I I brought monikers as the like secret the sneaky Santa gift to both of my uh like extended family get togethers over Christmas and that one has a lot of uh, a lot of risque stuff and so my little <laughs> nephew sitting there and we're like talking about a basic bitch. Mm. Yeah. Like, yeah. That sounds awkward. I should have filtered this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it says age 13 plus on here. I don't know about that either. Yeah, I don't know about that. Like there's very direct references to schlongs, so Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I feel like 18. I think this plus. is only a recommend if you have a group that you want to play this with one time. And like a party or something, maybe twice. So yeah, I, I feel like I would, yeah, like if you have several, like if you have parties often and like have new people there, it's a great way to learn some intimate details about an individual. It was funny. Quickly. So I mean, it's 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 probably worth it. It's I, not that expensive either, right? I I I I, I, I distinctly remember laughing during that stream. Yeah, more than any of the other streams that we've done, and it's not like Logan was saying. I think before we started. I, I remember playing all of these games and I remember enjoying them and, you know, having fun during the stream. Uh, but Billionaire Banshee was the one was one of the ones that I remember laughing the hardest. At. I feel like I remember laughing but, a lot at Dream Date. We didn't. That was Dream, last yeah, year. But, that was, yeah, that was last year. Yeah. Um, two years ago. Now. The Dream Crush was really fun. <laughs> Dream too, Crush. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the one. Uh, Dream Dream Crush was great. Um, and Dream, Dream, Dream Crush was... is more way more replayable than this, but it's the same kind of. Oh thing. yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's also like uh, more safe for work. Yeah, yeah. Because right there's because it's a like, dating it, show. It, it, like, it like walks up to the line, but it doesn't go over it. Um, uh, Dream Crush, I think, was the one that had yeah. the audience interaction. Yep, Dream Crush. Was. I think yeah. both of these did, right? We I so. did. I we think did, we did. We did. Because the thing is, is you vote. Yeah, what, you, it, was, what, it was just like smash or pass, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, the, so the thing, the thing about <laughs> Billionaire Banshee was like, all right, so this this person was for Justin, and it was like, I remember the Invisible Girlfriend was like, is this uh, somebody that Justin would want? And Justin was like, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it was an Invisible Girlfriend who you couldn't tell anybody about. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no problem they don't exist <laughs> all right that is billionaire banshee the cream of the crop next up we have a war of whispers classic ah, yeah. this is a game of, i remember enjoying this. this is a game of you are each it, like a advisor to various you're kingdoms actually, you're, you're advising all of the kingdoms you're advising, right you mm-hmm. can be advising all the kingdoms yeah you have yeah. like you have like spy networks i guess is probably the best way to to handle it right you're, yeah. you're like some sort of spy organization all the so yeah. you all yeah. have and it but also but at the same time there's war going on on the world map but your actions influence what's happening in the war with all the various armies so your your goal is to try to score as many points as possible by like at the end of the game like each army occupying territories and you get points for like, say like I get five points if red is occupying the most territories and down the line so each of you has different um scoring potentials that because those are all randomized at the start of the game so but you don't know what your opponent's uh loyalties are so but you end up you might end up sort of working with someone like to an extent and then you like very you clash on other ways so i am a big fan of this game though it was it plays yeah, this really game good really cool. um yeah basically, yeah i thought it was it's, like an elegant like varies and um Little, little finger, finger simulator, yeah. yeah. Little finger yeah. simulator, yeah. So you'll be you basically place your advisors around the board, and then it goes in clockwise order, and each of these actions are executed uh, one by one with the person who has an advisor sitting in that spot controlling the actions. And so, so things can get pretty pretty wacky, as you see. Like, and the the interesting thing is, like, all these kingdoms act in certain orders based on where they are on the board, and they always act in that order. So you know sort of what to expect, but you don't don't quite know what your opponents are going to be doing. Yeah, this was a uh, uh, this was a very excellent board game. I wish we had had a chance to. This is one of those games that, like, ten years ago, we, we would played, have played so many times, yeah. so many times, right? Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot to enjoy here. I love the the spin on the forex style of game where um, you're you're incentivized to kind of hide what you're what your plans are um yeah it was just there was a lot a lot to enjoy a good a good yeah. variation on it um just when you think like the forex genre has no no uh, innovation left you can you can play a game like this and, and really enjoy it so yep very clever to figure out how to do the the little finger simulator thing yeah, yeah i think it works really well with what is it's it's thematically really good 
and it plays really well with a with a group of people. I think I think we have never played it with four. Maybe we played it with four one time, or I played it with four one time, and it was like really solid. Like the the board fills up quick, and stuff's just happening all over the place. So it's a good game. Highly recommended. Word of Whispers. There you go. The cream of the crop. Next up, we have Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig. This is so a this was- tile drafting game. If I remember correctly, yes, right? This this one definitely is semi co op. Like yeah, it's right. It's it's so co op though. Like it's the most cooperative semi cooperative <laughs> game. You're 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 <laughs> drafting two tiles a turn, and then you're assisting the people on your left and right with adding rooms to either of those buildings. And you're you're so you're you're working with your left person on a building, and you're working with your right person on a building. And at the end of the game, you win based on your lowest score between those two. Yeah castles so you can't tank you can't just tank one of the castles you're genuinely trying to make the best castle with both the people out to your left and right like it you have to be trying your hardest so it feels just like a little fun group project everybody's doing and there's not like a lot of things that you can do to mess everybody else up it's just trying you're just trying to do the best you can with your castles yeah, I liked it a yeah, lot. It's it's a good party game, and it, it supports seven players very well. Like you're not, yeah. there's no downtime right. at all, right? I, I I've played very quite a long game for seven, but I mean, it doesn't like uh, it doesn't like add a ton of length yeah, for really additional players. It's just kind of it's just kind of a long game to play at a party with seven people. Yes, my my first exposure to this game was actually at a board gaming convention, and I was I was just there by myself. I was just uh, uh, there stag, and um, the I ended up. It was a board game uh, convention where there you could put placards on the table and it was like looking for players. Um, and so I ended up just like randomly jumping in on this game, having never tried it before and played it with six strangers and had a blast. It was it was that's so awesome. much fun. Um, I think and- that's like like I'm saying, like it would be different, right? If you didn't have to cooperate with the people to your left and right, it kind of like that's kind of the perfect game for strangers because you're learning yes. about the person to your left and right you're actually having like meaningful conversations yeah. about the game and it yeah lord farquaad, farquaad happy new year 44 months thank you so much yes yeah, wow. the, the, th- the thing that i really like about this game is um, any of these three players yep uh I, I, the, the thing that i love about this game is just the the ingenuity of it because it really solves that how do you get you how do you how do you work with this person and how do you work with that person um, yeah, the, and the like, still, like you not only score sabotage. your worst castle is the only the only scoring your worst castle is the perfect, central rule. Perfect. Yeah, because yeah. you could both like you you and your left partner uh, could make an amazing castle that neither of you ends up scoring. <laughs> and it might right, be the yeah. highest scoring castle on the table, but neither of you score it because your other castles sucked. I mean, yeah, or worse, every slightly, single worse, game right? the highest scoring castle will not score. True. Like yep. that's yep. that's just the nature of things. Yeah. <laughs> It's a it's a brilliant game. Uh, highly, it's I know it's a little bit older. Um, this is actually the game that we had to audible into when we tried to play Destiny. Oh, Destiny. this was the game we learned it too yeah. on the fly. Wow, I can't believe we did that. It was, I had I had at least played it. Yeah, right? yeah. Right. So um, I had to. We had to. We had to emergency uh, um, uh, jump into this. Basically, we we were we were trying to set up the stream. And it was like mere minutes before that stream started. <laughs> yeah. And you, if you go back and you watch the VOD, you can probably tell that we're really like like reading the rule book as we play. <laughs> yeah, we're a little bit flustered um, going yeah. into it, but uh, it, it still had a blast. I love this game. So, all right, this is okay. this is the one of the few games the that I wish I I have act, I, I wish I had played Play, more of. Yeah, and because, there's still more opportunity to play this game yeah. more, I think too. So it's it's yeah. good and it's good to pull out when you have a bunch of people. All right, next up we have the quest for El Dorado. Uh, this is the was this a racing the game? old game? It's yeah, an old one. Yeah, it's, it was. It was. It's a deck builder. I think it's one of the strongest deck builders that there is uh, because it's it's just so simple. Like you're you're drafting for movement because it's a race. Mm-hmm. You're trying to go through all these hex tiles, and your cards are like you can move through one forest or okay. one uh, water or like river. Or yeah, yeah, like three deserts. Okay, yeah. I and barely remember playing this the, game. So. Yeah, but, it was, it's so a fast. It's so, yeah, yeah. This it's is really this great. is pretty. This is a very accessible game, I'd say. Hmm. Yeah. If you want to show somebody their first deck builder or even their first board game, I feel like this is a fine one to go for. But yeah, every card is is movement, and um, 
you use the, their coins that are also the desert movement, but you can use them to buy new cards and then enhance your deck. Uh, there's very like for a deck builder, there's relatively few options. Um, so it's not like super overwhelming. Um, it's kind of like, you know how dominion only gives you like eight at a time or whatever. Uh, it's kind of like that where you're just not, you just don't have that many options, but it's good. You have enough options, uh, to build your deck. And then, yeah, you're just trying to go, you see how that like, sometimes the tiles will have like three ores on them or whatever. And that means you have to have one card with three ores to get on that space. Right. Yeah. Which, so like you, you might be able have. to take a shortcut at some point in the game with that. Yep. Yeah, right. I'd say the uh, yeah, the adjustables the adjustable layout gives you replayability too. Yeah, there's like infinite boards. Yeah, there's make, like right? there's like tons. Yeah, there's so many. Mm-hmm. There, I mean, they give you like ten in the in the book, but theoretically you can make your own pretty easily. Just like pop Just them them down, together. you got it. Yep. All right, that is the cream of the crop. Eldorado. Quest for Eldorado. Next up. We have the Lost Ruins of Arnak. Oh, uh, yeah. Deck Bangor building Lake. exploration yeah. game. Uh, worker placement. Tableau. No, not tableau building. It's like it's like you have a you have a player board. You, you've got options. Mo- you have you've yeah. like you have like various things that you can trade for resources during the game. Right. It's, like, it's a resource gathering and spending uh, yeah. as as efficiently Deck- as possible type of game. Yeah. Right. And yeah. to Nathan's point of uh, earlier in the stream, we were talking about this. This nails exploration. Yes. Uh, like you don't know what you're getting into, and you just sort of—I mean—you feel like you're on an adventure. You're like, uh, I hope I can handle. I mean, I know I can handle a giant spider, but I hope <laughs> this isn't a T Rex. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, yeah, uh, I love uh, this game. It's great. We played yeah, it a bunch love, of stream I, too. I love the unlocking new spaces on the board. And while those spaces are still lucrative, you're still super rewarded for going and unlocking new stuff. It's just mm-hmm. um, there's a, there's a lot about this game that feels pretty finely tuned um, when you play it several times. Like the deck building aspect well is really good too, is. and it's, yeah. and it only lasts five rounds. Like there's like basically a round timer, mm-hmm. which, which is, is good too. Because it, it like it's the first few rounds go fast, and the last few rounds are kind of slow because everyone's got so much stuff at that point. Uh, yeah. And it, it just flows really well in it, but it, it ends usually in like a little over an hour, right? Yeah, we did I'm, not get I'm a honestly chance really to play. surprised we didn't play with the expansion we, yet. We probably yeah, will. We probably, we probably will. will soon. Yeah. Very soon. Because we have the expansion, we just haven't played with it yet. And yeah, the expansion's been out for like a year. Yeah, well. Because <laughs> I, think, I think the expansion came out like this time last year. I think you're right. So. No, it, came, it, was, it was going to be at Gen Con, right? And then it just wasn't. Uh, I think it's... I think it's in 2021, I remember, maybe? <laughs> I bet... So the, no, the thing is, is I can I can go look at the text from like a year ago where Justin was like, "Hey, pick up that expansion for yeah. me," because that was yeah, it's uh, been sitting on the shelf for a hot minute. Yeah, yeah, it's been so yeah. We definitely. I just remember need to play was, the I remember it was supposed to be at one of the Gen Cons we went to, and it was not. I think there. it was twenty twenty one. They just had the. Like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. All right, that is Lost Friends of Arnak. Highly recommend Lost Ruins. Yeah, it's it's a it's a definite thumbs up. I, I don't know if you if you yeah. haven't heard of Lost Ruins at this point, definitely check it out. One hundred percent, check it out. It's, I'd be surprised it's totally if worth it. One of our cream of the crops, uh, I would imagine. The cream of the crop. We'll, Maybe. we'll find out. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right. The last two we have Gloomhaven Digital. Ah. Oh. Hey. Yeah. Uh. So we did. We did. We actually discussed at fair length, um, Gloomhaven before we started streaming. And Logan was like, "Hey, this is co- this that's content, baby." Yeah. <laughs> but um, but uh, so the, I think the what the the thing that we all kind of agreed on was that Gloomhaven Digital does not feel like a finished digital product. Yeah, um, it's just kind of buggy it's still, in certain it's areas. Still much more streamlined than playing a tabletop game, as you would expect from a video game. You, I mean, that's yeah. like the bare minimum that it needs to do. I mean, right? that but being said, it's like, it's, it's still like my second most played steam game from last year. And we played it a lot yeah. offline. We played it. We didn't only play it on stream. We, me and Nathan, our friends played it uh, outside of that. Yeah, I so. had a, I had a parallel campaign where we went through the whole thing. Uh, and that was while I was going through the whole thing with y'all. So yeah. like clearly yeah, I, had I played a, it a lot. So uh, the, the thing that I think that keeps it from having like a massive wide stream appeal is that uh, trying to compare this to like a modern uh, video game um, is I don't I'm not going to say laughable, but it it isn't a fair comparison per se, because yeah. they're trying to capture all of Gloomhaven digitally. 
um, which I think they successfully did because we actually finished this, whereas we did not. I've played two different Gloomhaven campaigns with the board game that I have never finished. Never finished either. Right, of yeah. Them. I've never, never, never beaten the Gloom except for digitally. And we, yeah. yeah. It, it would be hard and to recommend this so, though to someone who hasn't played Gloomhaven physically. I had never, I had never gotten to play the Berserker until Digital Gloomhaven, right? Yeah, um, there I were mean, there were I classes. Like, you, like you could like if if well, this is a big ask, but if you buy Gloomhaven and then buy Jaws of the Lion expansion, start you could start there. I feel like that's fine. Starting with Jaws uh, of the Lion, I would also recommend. I would I would always recommend everybody start with Jaws of the Lion, like physical or digital. Like, yeah, that is a that is. It has a tutorial in it where Gloomhaven, the regular game, does not. It's like, <laughs> yeah, get ready, get ready to in. die, idiot. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. We, we and, and honestly, like the first, the first two scenarios are some of the hardest ones in the game. Yeah, we we lost to it right when we did it. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's just like that's crazy, right? It's wild. Mm-hmm. So there you go. That's yeah. Gloomhaven Digital. If you have, if you like Gloomhaven, you know, it's a great digital experience. I would say. Yeah. Next up, if you think you would like Gloomhaven. It's probably worth. I feel like this is a good. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably worth. Probably good. Probably good vibe. Well, Frosthaven Digital Waiting Room. Next up. <laughs> yes. We have, and last up, we have Across the Obelisk. Uh, this is a game we we played this once with you on stream, right, Logan? This was Across during Obelisk, a. Yeah. Yep. This was this is when we had uh, had to implement the COVID protocols. At oh, one that's point. right. You got COVID, and we. Okay. Yeah. 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 Are you I, exposed, I don't, you I don't think I to got it. it. It was just I was yeah. Like he was play, I think I he was know. playing it safe at the time. It was. Uh, so yeah. this is a game that uh, yep. Nathan and I and a couple of our friends played a lot of this year. And uh, so Logan jumped on a stream with us and yep. played it one night uh, for the COVID protocol thing. It is a deck cooperative deck builder uh, dungeon crawl kind of game. It's a com- comparable to Slay the Spire. Yeah. But you, uh, each, you, are, you play an entire... It's terrorized. like Slay the Spire and uh, um, Darkest Dungeon, right? Kind of, where yep. there's four... You have four characters and you're fighting against... Uh, up to four other enemies and you, but you all, all only have your own individual decks that you're building. So you have a turn, you play your cards, the next player goes, et cetera. And there's like an initiative or like up at the top of the screen there. So, uh, and there, and there's also 16 unique characters that I'll play very differently. So this is my number one played steam game of last year. That's, that's how much I played this game. Uh, it, it is probably <laughs> one of my, it's definitely my favorite deck builder, a uh, digital deck building card game of all time. Uh, over Slay the Spire, over all that stuff. So I think it's just it does, super it, good. It does not unseat Slay the Spire for me. However, I think Across the Obelisk is very good. Um, one of the problems that I believe that most games that are trying to emulate Slay the Spire fall into, the trap that they fall into, is thinking that more mechanics equals better. Yeah, um, right. And uh, so the I think the multiplayer aspect of Across the Obelisk is what manages to make it comparable to Slay the Spire, um, and uh, that that part of it is so fun. We had so much fun. Um, like, we were laughing and making and just having fun, and it was like you wouldn't think it would be that exciting to play a cooperative right. deck builder, but we would always have so much fun when we played. Yeah, it. it I, I I have. I definitely want to I want to get a group to play this because I, I don't think this is a one player game, right? Like, no, you can play should, one player, but especially if you're yeah. just starting it, it's so overwhelming and there's so much going on. You want to only yeah. be able to have to focus on just your own own deck instead of four different decks, because if you play one player, you're building four separate decks of, of character cards. So it's a lot to keep track of if you're not That's familiar yeah. with the game. I, I highly recommend this at four players. I imagine two players who know what they're doing can break the characters off. Yeah. And you can like juggle two characters at the same time. That's probably fun too. But I highly recommend the four player version of this um, it, because it lets you focus on a character. So, like, if you played a lot of Slay the Spire, you know that the Silent plays very different than the Watcher that plays very different than the Ironclad and so on, right? And so, um, the uh, uh, this game. Like there are different strategies. There are uh, builds that you can develop if you find the right item. Right, you can suddenly now build in a specific way that you couldn't have before. Um, and uh, if you're trying to balance four different characters, that can be a lot. That could be a very big ask. Yeah, 
Um, but once it's so rewarding once you learn like the synergies different characters have with yeah. like status effects like this one character is probably good at like putting frost on it but then you you have a character that's good at using blunt weapons but there's a way to make blunt weapons work with frost damage and stuff so it, there's just so much really cool interactions and uh, like the equipment in the game is really interesting and fun to to get and like the different builds you can get based on if, pieces of equipment that you can find super fun too and the more you learn about the game the better it becomes I feel like. Yeah, we played through this on multiple, multiple different difficulties. Like we just kept ratcheting the difficulty up um, because like when you when you first dive into the game and you know how things work, it like you just you just smash right through the game. Um, and then you get to like a slightly higher difficulty and some of the stuff that worked on the lower difficulty just stops working. And now you suddenly got to kind of like focus. Out. Um, yeah, and so uh, we just that feels, kept, that feels like we, Slay the Spire, right? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, like the yeah, same oh, yeah. thing, with sentience. Yeah, not since like Monster Train um, had I played a game where I like wanted to go do more difficulties, just because the game was. I, I will say the campaign mode of this game is like very, very long. It is super um, long. It's like six hours, it, right? Yeah, yeah. You're talking like multiple hours. We would, we would like, it, we'd get like a Sunday and we'd start at like noon. You know, that way we could finish up around can dinner you, time. I mean, can you like save and quit? You come can. back later. Yeah, you can. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. um, but, but yeah, it's, but, but that was like, you're, you got your train of thought derailed, right? Like you're, if you're trying to build your deck in a very specific way and you come back, you're kind of like, where was I going with this? What item was I looking for? Um, so yeah, I, I would, I would highly recommend this. My personal caveat is I would want to play it with four people. Yeah, I mean, I would recommend 100% if you have people to play with. If you're really into deck builders and you want to play it by yourself, then I'd recommend it as well. Uh, otherwise, it's it's a hard sell, I think. But I do think it is super rewarding if you want to dive into it, regardless. So nice. there you go. That is all of the games. Who wants do you all have any other games that you that you like have an honorable mention? Or do it- uh, Northguard. Northguard. Yeah, we never got to play that on I, stream. We didn't get to play it on stream, but uh, Northguard came out this year, and it's a Viking simulator. Um, you take an axe and you go bury it in another Viking's chest. Um, but uh, it has um, quite a bit of uh, of interesting 4x mechanics. Once again, like I said earlier, and deck building. Um, every time that you think uh, the 4x genre is out of stuff, but uh, this this game was really good. Yeah, we played a good. Uh, yeah, bit. this was. Interesting. Uh, I really, really enjoyed Force Science. Uh, I don't know if y'all remember playing that one. Oh yeah, no, that game was good. Blocks. I did not it's like super that. Super good. <laughs> I liked that game. It's, I liked that. Game. It, it's it like up to six players and frantic and weird, and you could give it to anybody and say like, okay, you're just building blocks. But th- yeah, you build those kind of structures, yeah. and that's like a cure for a disease or whatever. Yeah. Also, uh, Blood on the Clock Tower is mm. a reimplementation of Werewolf that is that makes every aspect of Werewolf better. Um, I will say. You can play werewolf with drunk people. You cannot play blood on the clock tower with drunk people. I've tried both. <laughs> One works, the yeah. other doesn't. <laughs> yeah. you but, give, as soon as you give somebody a handout and they're drunk, they're like, oh, I don't, no. I don't want anything to do with this. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. <laughs> so the, uh, I, w- I would say so. The thing about uh, the thing about werewolf is if you played a lot of werewolf, like our group has right now, if we play werewolf, you know, once a year, then um, you know, like it's it's fun. But there was yeah. a point where we were playing Werewolf almost nightly. And, uh, and, and like, would have, if, stri- if this game had existed then, it would have blown our minds. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Imagine, imagine we played like a bunch of Werewolf and then like Blood of the Clock Tower came out. Like, I think we'd still be playing Blood of the Clock Tower today. <laughs> yeah. Um, if, if it came out then, but just because of the sheer number of strategies. So, interesting. Uh, I guess the other one I wanted to mention is uh, what's the game Moon- Moonrakers? Oh yeah, Moonrakers, yeah, you're moon making. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, okay. The, the moon make, Moonrakers is great, uh, and unfortunately, it just uh, it won't work with our setup because like basically three is the is the maximum people that are on this, the screen at once. I mean, and this game got more like cells with five or six. Yeah, yeah. You need you need five people and. <laughs> Yeah, it, like the more the merrier is true in this game. It's so good. It, it's just like a deck builder that you're you're it's, semi co op in the yeah. way that you have to cooperate. It until solves, you don't. It solves a lot of problems that like um, that the, this this type of game has, right? Where someone's in the lead and you can never catch them. 
If someone's in the lead in this game, they have to just, do everything by the whole, themselves at that point. Then. The whole <laughs> yeah. the whole table just cold shoulders them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're just like, no, nope, not working with you. Yeah, it's literally the thing. Like, like you, you, all you need to do is get ten prestige points. You get those by doing missions, but you only get to do you only get to be the leader of the mission when it's your turn. And when you're the leader, you can invite other people, and you can also choose not to invite other people. So that it very quickly is just like it's easy to get the first seven, eight points, and then it's com- it's very hard to get the remaining. Three. Yeah, yep. I was gonna say I I can't I couldn't actually believe that this game didn't end when it looked like there were like three or four people ready to win. Right. It I was, was like always a, a round or two. Where I was always put it surprised together. by how long the game would take. Yeah. After. It's surprisingly difficult to get that those last couple of points because, I mean, you're used to going on missions with like three or four people and having to, having to shoulder the whole weight of three people is really hard in this game. I, I'd, I'd love that too. Like if you're if you're just like way behind, it's so funny <laughs> how you just become like this hired gun. Everybody mm-hmm. is fine working with you at that point yeah. because you are not like, a well, threat to bring, them. Bring, bring, yeah, and bring you're like, come on, on. Well, I'll yeah, pay you. I'll, yeah, I'll pay you. I'll pay you. Take the you take exactly. a couple. You can take hits. all the money. Take all the money. All I want is the prestige. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's it's such a it's such an interesting balance self balancing game. It wasn't quite j- game of the Gen Con for us. It was like it was looking like it was, it was going to be. Um, we played a couple of times, and uh, uh, so uh, um, yeah, it was a. Uh, it, it ended up being a lot of fun. Um, I think decorum ended up uh, slightly edging out um, the this. So, what's up, board game Bree? Uh, have we played the expansions? Did, did we play with the expansions? And because we can't, we got it at a Gen Con, right? We, we had we had one mini expansion. We had one mini um, expansion. The, uh, yeah, the the other ones I I backed the Kickstarter for all the huge expansions that are coming, and mm, uh, I think okay. that's. That's shipping to me soon, but it has not arrived yet. Yeah, so I think I think the thing that happened was because because uh, we played this and somebody was like, "Oh, we didn't get it all, so we don't really own the game." And then you went to go check into it, and you're like, "Oh, it's not all out yet." Uh, so right, we, I yeah. think we when we played with it at the time, I think we had played with everything that had that existed, except yeah. for like the small pack that was like in the box or something. So because um, I was like, I was looking forward to more cards for this game. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the, again, the more all you need is some more cards for any expansion of this, and it's fine. Like, just yeah. have more variety and things you can encounter. I really like the art style and the way they they use color to. It's distinctive. Yeah, it's great. It's distinctive, but it reinforces. I wish there was a way we could play it on stream because it would be really fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's like, like I said, a three player kind of a, a limit. Yeah. All right. So, any more any more honorable mentions before we? Uh, the, the, with the game, the planet game that we played the at Gen Con. Game. You know, like wormholes? The green planet game. Wormholes? Oh, wormholes. Worm- War- wormholes, yeah. <laughs> wormholes was great. We had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun exploring each other's wormholes. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, if you want to, if you have a group of people that want to make 100,000 sex jokes in a row, yeah. play this This is game. the game for you. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, the, a simple question you need to ask yourself. If you hear the phrase warm holes and it makes you giggle and you know the 25th time that you hear it it's still going to make you giggle then warm holes is absolutely yeah, this will really pay off for you <laughs> uh, th- yeah. that joke aside this game was actually pretty good i don't think we yeah, it's a, it's a solid I, did we it, did we consciously not play it on stream oh, I, it, it is a game that's better with more people right i i, I was not a big we, fan I mean, of it so i was not excited to yeah I, th- I think we could probably play it with three but i don't know I think yeah, the game got better. So just the, the when you're exploring through space um, and you're opening up wormholes and you're letting people travel yeah. through them. More, they... more folks equals more holes. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, it was definitely one of those things where where uh, I, 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 I enjoyed it when we played it. Um, but it, it had a problem with it taking forever to get back to your turn. Yeah, it was just like you're just like sitting there. I think we played it with like five people and it was just like forever yeah. and get back to it and forever and get back to it. I do think like it. I do think it is propped up by the sex jokes <laughs> in, yeah. in a major you way. You only ride that so far. <laughs> right. But I'm, I'm thinking far. about, I'm thinking about wormholes <laughs> and I'm smiling right now. So funny. Yeah. Same. So damn funny. So it's, I, 
I still give it a giggle. Uh, so. Okay, is that yeah. it? The, what was the, I, it wasn't this. It wasn't this game. It was the. Uh, it was the game where you're. It was like ecology or something where you're like going the trees and the sun is moving around the planet. Did you play that Ever, one? I forget what is it was it called. Evergreen something. Ever. Evergreen. 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 That was, Amber that was fun. Yeah, Evergreen. Yes, Evergreen. Photosynthesis. 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 No, it was this one, right? Probably. It was not. Pho- it was this one. No, show me. Evergreen. Yeah, it yes, was. It was that one. It was Evergreen. It was Evergreen. It was Evergreen. Although photosynthesis does sound like a similar game because you're you're working with like what direction the sunlight is coming in. Um, this was fun. This was like a brain burning puzzle game. Yeah, I enjoyed this one a lot. Our yeah. scientist, our scientist uh, friend, bought this game because he was looking for something to to play. Um, and he, he felt like this was like a good like family game, a good significant other game. It was really cool. Um, it was elegant how like the sun dictated how the plants grew yeah. and like which ones got uh, which ones grew and which ones didn't. It was it's really neat. I liked the, the mechanics a lot. I don't know that this is a game I would play a lot. I, I enjoyed that we played it though. Yeah, it was it was it was definitely a cool game. I yeah. I wish I had played it like a couple more times. Um, so I'm glad yeah. somebody else bought it, right? Because uh, it, it was one. It's not one that I would have like cognitive. I wouldn't like, pull this I, off the I shelf very often, yeah, yeah or at I all. I wouldn't consciously right? yeah, yeah, yeah. use this, yeah. right? Um, but I, I was but glad was to have played it. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what was the verdict on Starship Captains? It really intrigued me. Love it. Big fan. Uh, Starship Captains. Yeah, yeah, Starship Captains is great. It was um, good to force the stream twice. So. Yeah, if you want a soft, um, if you want a soft uh, Star Trek simulator, it's pretty good for that. Okay. Yep. If you like Ruins of Arnak, it's it, it's got a lot of DNA that's similar. Logan, it's time. Oh God, I have to go first. It's time. The cream of the crop. I'm not going to take the cream of the crop. But I think, I think if I, I think if I was true with my with my heart, I would vote for Ark Nova. But I think that's Nathan's cream, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pass. Okay. I'm I'm probably gonna say Starship Captains. Okay. Like we okay. went through all that stuff, and yeah. the recency bias hopefully was mitigated a little bit. But I really enjoyed Starship Captains. I really enjoy, um. Uh, like I want to play it again right now. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it. if you hadn't said Starship Captains, I probably would have said that as mine. Mm-hmm. It's just really so elegant. It's got a lot of cool stuff going on. Really good. It makes you feel like you're you're a Star Trek franchise. Yeah. <laughs> what All more right. could you ask for? Starship Captains is Logan's the cream of the crop. The cream of the crop. The yeah. cream of the crop. All right, Nathan. Uh, mine's Ark Nova. It's Ark Nova. You sure? About about <laughs> yeah. Ark Nova. Um, I- I still, I still, I still cold locked of the century of the week. Dark Nova uh, back when I played it the first time, I was like, "This is my favorite board game that I've played in years." <laughs> um, so the, uh, um, the, so the, the thing about Dark Nova is that it feels like a Dracula. It feels like all these really like crunchy. It's got some Race for the Galaxy too, right? Like with the action Race cards. for the Galaxy, terraforming oh, Mars. Yeah. So uh, I will freely admit. That um, this is like a board gamer's board game, right? This is not something that I could put in front of like my mom and know yeah. that she would have fun playing, right? Well, Cascadia. Like, Billy liked is... this game, right, Logan? Yeah, he and, liked and it. Billy's not and someone yeah, that uh, always likes big crunchy games like this. No, although I like, he's you know he's my partner, so I've I've just forced a lot of complex games onto him at this yeah, point. And true. So maybe he was just ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I will say because uh, I think we we actually had a discussion like that on on stream the other night where where some people were chatting about uh, games that they have a hard time getting people to play. Um, I feel like Ark Nova would fall into that category of of game where there are, there's some percentage of the population and, and easily a double digit percentage of the population that looks up Arc Nova and says nope walks away yeah never, i mean they, when they you, turn, when I, honestly when i looked it, at the components the first thing i was like oh god and i started reading the turn, results it, i was like oh jeez yeah they turn 360 yeah. degrees and they walk right away from Arc Nova like, so uh, this is this is definitely one where it would be extremely beneficial to play with somebody who has already played before so they can yes. they can teach you how to play and rather be the than shit out of you. trying to figure it out. <laughs> they make a way better zoo than yours. <laughs> they, are gonna beat, they are going to beat dog shit right out of you. <laughs> yeah. But uh... <laughs> but it's fine. It's it's still a fun experience, I think, even if you lose. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with like your, yeah, building so out your zoo. It's, it's I don't, I don't even think I won. I don't think I won any of the games that we played. Like I, I'm pretty sure we did that I didn't win any of this. 
Um, and, but uh, I know, the thing- like the, it, it meets my like the number one thing that I love about a board game is when it's fun to lose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Ark Nova is fun to lose. I, I feel like I'm competing against myself when I play. Yeah, Ark and Nova. you you feel when like I, okay, if I, I need to, I can do. I want to play again because I feel like I can do better next time. Yes, it's yeah. that feeling. And uh, I love games that give me that feeling yeah. of the. Oh, I actually know what I'm doing now. And ah, I can improve. I got to <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. All right. That yeah. is Nathan's. Of the, the cream of the crop. Cream of the crop. Mine. My cream of the crop. Is going to be. A little game. I like to call. Decorum. Ah, <laughs> uh, I was hoping one of us would say the decorum. game of this passive aggressive cohabitation. It was my game of Gen Con. <laughs> Um, this is living with Justin Simulator. It, it's it is roommate simulator. <laughs> it's it's just it was a lot of fun. We we got we got in some heated yelling uh, at at Gen Con, and it was just like oh, that was God. so fun. It was yeah. and to be clear, it was all like it was fun, fun role play, like, yelling, every role time. Play yelling. I I love a game that gives me an in game reason to yell in a funny <laughs> manner at yeah. people. Especially from a place of frustration. And, and there were games where I like, uh, so I, I misunderstood one of my goals for like a, a long time. <laughs> and I was fucking everybody up and everyone was yelling at me. I was like, I'm just doing what my card says. And it's like, at some point in the game, uh, you can like share one of your goals with someone else and only they know it. So then they're like, I don't think that works like you think it works basically and then so it's like oh fuck i really <laughs> i really messed it up but it was just like stuff like that can happen in this game and it's like it's all in good fun and it's it's just really it's a good experience as far as just like a deduction game it's that it scores is just it's a yeah. deduction game a cooperative deduction game so yeah, that was the duke joker yeah and then the two-player mode it kind of gives you personas to play yeah. and uh, and goals to accomplish with with the deduction so uh really cool game I, I would I would highly recommend this game to to people who are into like I guess it's would be compared to like Sudoku or games like that. Yeah, yeah, it's like group Sudoku. Uh, it's like group yeah, Sudoku. It, it is. It, it is like that. Uh, and you, it's it's just it, it makes those it takes that that already like fun satisfying puzzle and then makes it even more fun because you're in this weird place where you're cohabitating with all those people and it's simulating getting to know each other and you get to yell at each other for fun yeah. like this yeah. is yeah. very good <laughs> uh, uh so I, I would highly recommend this game and it's really 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 easy to explain to i think i think almost anyone can pick this up almost immediately yeah. uh so it's, it's yeah probably even more accessible than cascadia oh i think so mm-hmm. i think so yeah especially to people yep. i think you could explain this to people who aren't like board gamers but like sudoku for instance right because they, they would probably pick it up pretty quick. So there you go. That doesn't work for me at all, little darling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that ain't gonna work for me. All right. <laughs> that is our stream. That is the cream of the crop. First annual cream of the crop. We'll, yeah. probably, we'll try stream to do this every year. It's pretty, it's pretty fun, I think. I, I, was, uh, I enjoyed... Um, I would, I, uh, Brass uh, Birmingham has been on my list for a long time. We did actually stream Everdell one time. You could dig up. Yeah, you could dig up the Everdell stream. Me and Nathan played it, right? Yep. Yeah, last I year, was, I, I, think was, I, I think I think it was in the window after Gen Con. I think we played a two player just so that way we could finish. Because <laughs> the Everdell is not is not fast. So I wait. Did I buy Brass? I do have Brass Birmingham. Yeah, I'm looking at the shelf right now. We were gonna play it one night. And we ended up not playing it. So we will do yeah. Brass Birmingham soon. How about that? If we don't get Frost Haven, we might do it next week. Nice. That that is one of the game. Uh, yeah, that's. That's what I was about to say is like, I bet 2023 the calendar will be chuck a block full of Ross David. Yeah, it depends <laughs> if we can stick through the whole it. campaign on stream. I'm not I'm not convinced we will be able to. Uh, my my worry about Frost David is that it's just such a table presence and so hard to set up and take down. And it'll be really annoying for like mm. me and Nathan because we have to like take it down every time we want to stream other stuff. Uh, yeah, every yeah, single yeah. every think- single week we'll have to take it down, right? And put it back so we, we actually played Gloomhaven in this house before I was living here. Um, and before it was remodeled, and there was there was basically the Gloomhaven room. It was the whole room. And, yeah. yeah, and it was yeah, like it was the table. Right? The, uh, no, it was the it was what's the dining the, room. The, oh yeah, you're right. Room right. Table is right now, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the the that that room was just like covered in Gloomhaven stuff. Um, mm-hmm. and so it was like we just know. Um, that was before there was a dog in the house too, right? So it was just like yeah, yeah just leave all leave that all stuff, stuff around. Yeah. You can, you can cat, leave but... all of these chewable pieces. On the floor, you know, delicious so, cardboard. Yeah, yeah. So, and then it became the Kingdom Death room after that, right? The, the Kingdom Death was even more table space. So, 
Yeah. Holy crap. I, I would love. Yeah. Yeah. If we if Justin, if Justin and I were paid one point five million dollars to stream all the time, we would we would have a month where we just play Kingdom Death. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But the, the problem you is, pay me one point five million dollars. I'll do just about anything for a month. Like, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But yeah, if uh, <laughs> I, I the the funny thing, I, when I talk about Kingdom Death Monster, I talk about how how the game was so hard that it made you quit it, Logan and Paul. Um, and then our it, other not, friend, it, I I I can I can stand hard. You like difficulty is not. It's it's the, the problem is it was the, the, stupid, the emotional you got attached like the dumbest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but I'm saying like we it, it was just like, did you want to go in a in a cool door? And we're all like, yeah, sounds great. And they're like, what an idiot. What a stupid idiot. All dumb, your people are dead. dead. And they don't yeah. they don't even exist anymore. What a dumbass. Yeah. And I, it's like, tough I, out I, there. I don't mess. I don't mess with that. I don't mess with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the guy Gaxian dungeon of you're only yeah. one, you die. I think more the more yeah. Nathan and I played it, the more we learned to mitigate that kind of stuff. And so it was just like kind of uh, it rewarded you having yeah. a lot of knowledge of the game. So, right. you, would you call it a Souls like board game? Yeah, it, uh, it is. It is. It's, that, like, it's like now that we're in the year of our Lord Elden Ring, I, uh, uh, and I have learned to enjoy those games, yeah. maybe I could go yeah, back Especially to once you down. learn the monsters, they become way, way easier. Like once you learn the patterns right. and stuff, it's very rewarding. And uh, I, I would compare it to you... it's like Dark Souls meets Monster Hunter, basically, the game. Yeah, the first time you fight the I lion, mean, those, are, just, those are words that I like. Yeah. The lion is just thrashing the shit out of you. Um, and then, like, once you understand how it works, like, the lion fight is almost a joke. Uh, I would say the gazelle is the same way. The first time we fought the gazelle, Paul ended up getting eaten by, like, its, 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 it's chest, chest that's maw. in its mouth. It chewed off he all his limbs in there. one by yeah, one. Yeah, it was, like, biting off limbs. It was, like, <laughs> t- uh, clomping off whole limbs. Um, and it was one of those things, like, I, I don't think I've ever experienced, like, existential dread it playing a board game. terrifying. Like, yeah, playing here it is, I found it. I, de- I definitely had that while we played, for sure. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, real. Yeah, right there, it's got, that's just the mouth. That's his ribs, but it's a mouth, and it's, it eats you. It's very, it's pretty um, terrifying. Um, it's, yeah. it's, it is right definitely the, the scariest board game ever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like... It's also weirdly horny, like oh, it's super. Horny. Oh yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. Anime bubes horniness, but I mean, yeah, whatever. It's bimbos and himbos, the game. <laughs> but yeah, every every monster has thing vibes for sure. Yeah, it, it's all it's all like versions, like thing versions of regular monsters, or I'm sorry, regular animals, not monsters. Yeah, they turn into monsters. Right. Yeah. The the phoenix literally sucks you into its cloaca. <laughs> yeah. It has like, it and then, has you, like get, a then you age what? 50 years. <laughs> yeah, it, it has a hell cloaca and it just sucks you right in. Why does it? Oh, yeah. It's uh, the, the, the game. Sucks, I, uh, sucks into the cloaca is, yeah. <laughs> is not how that works. That yeah, is not, that's how it works with this phoenix. Yeah. That's not how that works. It is, in works. fact, how it works. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like you trying, tell I, me, you trying I, to tell me how a hell phoenix works? Come on, come on. You know better yeah, than this, that. This isn't right, a, right. good, this I guess, a good... I guess, actually, a hell phoenix sucking you into its butthole so it can age yeah. you for hundreds of years sounds... This, exactly yeah, I was going to say, that, that picture doesn't do justice to the cloaca. The model has, like, the... It's, has, it's like, got the, hands around it, remember? It's got a bunch of tiny yeah, hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah so the, it, 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 you have, like, 50 small hands. <laughs> that, so, like, the, the, the phoenix looks like a bird, right? Like, it looks like an actual big, fiery phoenix. And then when you get closer, you realize that its feathers are just hands. And so, like, when you, when you assemble the model, there's, like, 50 hands that you can glue all over it. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's, yeah. It, it's the a good game, game is just so, so dis- I re- I, it's really it's, disturbing. One day right, we'll play and this it did stream. feel like Monster Hunter, and I've, I felt good about that. It's just, like, I'm used to Monster Hunter... Like where your your progress is saved, your progress is not safe. I mean, you can like not any version. Oh, of yeah, safe. there you go. So, 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 like you see on its wings there, like along the edge of the wings, those are hands. <laughs> not, not, I'm not talking about the giant hands that you see like right in front of it. I'm talking about the small Ew. little hands all Ew. along the edge there. Yeah, there's just tiny. They're out to grab they're you. They're grabbing on you. Yeah. They're grabbing on you and they'll yeah. shove you in the cloaca. <laughs> your character's gonna retire. <laughs> so- or get yeah. some madness. I've never been. I've never been so like simultaneously like disgusted and horrified. Uh, and horny. I, I will say. I will say, killing monsters in that game feels good, especially like the, the first really time hard, you, challenging ones, right? And the yeah. first time you kill them, yeah. 
Yeah. I, one yeah, day we'll play this on like stream. Yeah, it sounds like they set out. Yeah, one they day. set out to make a dark thing, and it sounds like it's mostly successful. There, I think yeah. the expansion and, actually and, might come out this year, so that does give us an excuse to play it. Oh God, that like, guy! Do you remember that guy? Thing? This guy? <laughs> not that guy. Not not that. The Lego, the, the Lego, Lego tiger, the Lego man. <laughs> Where? Who? Uh, it was back one or two. I, I've got the stream lag. Yeah, who knows? It could be anything. This guy, the Kingsman. I remember the, butcher? the Kingsman. Yeah, the, the butcher, Kingsman. Yeah. The Kingsman like comes to your village and is like, "Hey, I'll be back, and I'm going to kill all of you." The Kingsman. And so like, you just have this little. The Kingsman like is the one that has like the the counter attack. So you yeah. have to like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's it learning the way the monsters work is so cool. Oh my god, it's so cool. You're slender man. I <sighs> I would be I would be open to giving this another shot especially on stream like i said that's, once the expansion comes fine. out i think it'll definitely be worth us diving into again for sure cool all right that's it we could we could talk about random ass games for all night so oh, yeah. thanks, thanks for yeah. watching everybody the cream of the crop, uh, yeah. cream of the crop uh, is complete uh, yeah do, do some podcast mode podcast mode yeah we did a little little chill hang sesh with us there's um, logan stuff yeah check out my podcast we we just wrapped up our uh planet cryptid season it was really fun um so yeah, check it out. There you go. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great night. We're going to be back on Wednesday for Blood Bowl 7s, so that should be interesting. Oh, yeah. We need to... Uh, I have a list of teams from which you can choose that All are right. painted. Mm -hmm. so, Y'all awesome are doing that. Blood Bowl on stream? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. I told you about 7s, right? The se how 7s is a faster version of Blood Bowl? Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're gonna play yeah, that. I'm, so. I, that that bridge is is very burned. The the playing Blood Bowl thing, but yeah. experiencing Blood Bowl through others sounds great. Yeah. Like, so you remember how you started playing with Chaos Doors, um, yeah. and uh, you immediately stopped playing because your Bull Centaurs got beat up. Uh, yeah, we they had died. A, they didn't get beat up. They they were murdered. Uh, they're they're. <laughs> Not they, 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 they can get they got yes, sent they home. can get better they can get better they, they got sent they to the they, they got sent to the chaos glue factory anyway the uh, um <laughs> a, a, a mutual friend of ours same thing he started playing chaos doors his bull centaurs get killed in like the first game that he plays and he's like well i'm never playing this game again yeah he's actually coming around to playing the game again because the the league that we're in is so huge it's like half new players like seriously, it's like like a bunch of people who've never played before, um, and so he's he's back around to playing it with the uh, with the new edition of the game that came out in uh, twenty twenty. So nice. Oh okay. yeah. That's never it. say never. Is what I'm saying. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks everybody. Yeah. Appreciate and everybody hanging out. You're the real cream of the crop. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye and have a great year. Have a great year. But we'll also see you Whole Wednesday. Year. Goodbye. Bye-bye.